Hey, this is Matt to once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time for uh, Martin. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested, requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, re reviews, randomness, out of the blue, and whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, there's a, a film called Formula 51 that was also known as the 51st State. Now, Formula 51 was directed by Ronnie Yu. This is before Freddy vs. Jason. This is after Bride of Chucky. And it's Samuel Jackson. You got Robert Carlyle, who is in Ravenous, The Full Monty. What was it 28 weeks later? You also have this girl, Emily, Emily Mortimer. She was in Disney, uh, Disney's The Kid with Bruce Willis. She was in Stream 3. She was in Lars and the Real Girl. Meatloaf, may he rest in peace, the singer. He's in this as the villain, nicknamed the Lizard. You also have this guy, Reese Ifens, Ifens, the guy who played the Lizard in The Amazing Spider-Man, and then in No Way Home. He's in this. And this is a film that... I didn't mind it at the end of the day, because it had enough of a fast pace. It's only like 80, 90 minutes long. Had enough style because of Ronnie Yu's direction. Sam Jackson, Robert Carlyle were not too bad in it. And it had enough energy that even with its flaws, the movie kept going. It was a decent time waster. I mean, more so than, say, The Man, which was another film Sam Jackson did as a buddy movie that's supposed to be a comedy, and that was with... Oh, what was his name? Guy from American Pie. The Dad. Eugene Levy. But I thought this was better than The Man. That may not be saying much, but... First, you have this opening, which I don't know why this opening was in the film. I don't think it was needed. It's... It takes place in the 70s. It's obviously horrible green screen of Sam with a very, very large afro driving, smoking weed as a hippie, getting terrible bad screen. Like, you could tell it's bad green screen. Cop picks him over. Pick him over. Cop says, hey, pull over. Sam goes, hey, if you bust me, I have this ability to go to the university. It's going to screw up my chances. Cop finds the weed and goes, the 60's over, man. Drops it, gets him arrested, screws up his chances. As three years later, he's a chemist working for this bad guy, played by Meatloaf. And making drugs, things of that nature. Now, Sam Jazz's character... Always wears a, he wears a tilt, he has golf clubs, he leaves, he tries to set up this trap to kill Meatloaf, and everybody else dies except Meatloaf because he falls through this portion of the floor. But before that happens, he calls Sam because he's wondering where he's at, and he realizes what's going on, and he goes, You fucked me. I'm truly ass invaded. That's such a weird line reading. You fucked me. I'm truly ass invaded. I guess it's... It's a new one on me. I've, I mean, I'll give you that. I've never heard it said quite like that before. So I guess... Uh, <laughs> you chalked it up to originality? I don't know. Anyways... Sam Jackson thinks everyone's dead, the bad guys, so he goes to meet these other guys for a deal. He's in Liverpool. The guy who's supposed to pick him up to get him to this deal is Robert Carlyle, who is looking forward to the new soccer game. I'm sorry, they're doing football. To pick up Sam, he's a guy who doesn't like much of anybody, doesn't like Americans, even goes to a pub with these, not Americans, but these other guys, steers them with a flare, curses up a storm, and his buddy stupidly kills the chemist they had 
And Robert Carlyle was like, why'd you do it? You told me to take care of him. No, I don't mean that take care of him, you stupid wanker. So other hijinks ensue, and he's got to get Sam Jackson to this deal. Because Sam Jackson has made this drug that supposedly is 51, 51 times more than any other drug. Hence the, the title. And there's some weird things of humor. Like the, the boss they're going to. I guess because he has hemorrhoids. He has to sit on this little balloon thing, donut thing. And each time he sits on it, there's a whistle. Some weird choices in this. And then also there's this hit woman. Who, Meatloaf, uh, has his hit woman to take care, first to kill Sam, but then realize, oh, wait, Sam has his info in his head, tell anyone who's near him so that they don't get the formula. And that's the hit woman's played by Emily Mortimer, who's also used to go out with Robert Carlyle's, Carlyle's character. And like I said, the, the plot... The plot is the plot, but it does have enough energy and gusto. I think Sam and Robert Carlyle do have a nice bit of chemistry with each other. That it does work despite its, you know, its wanty plot. Other people recognize Sean Pertwee. He was in Event Horizon. He's been in quite a few other stuff. He was in Dodge Soldiers, very underrated werewolf film. He's here as a cop who's a little bit of a dirty cop, and there's a bit with him and the uh, the Sam and Robert play chicken, and then they're pushing Sean Pertwee's car and is crashing through all these other cars. Pretty decent action scene, well choreographed, well handled. A lot of practicality in that sequence. There's also there's the skinheads they have to deal with. Who at one point Sam Jackson fucks him up with his golf clubs. At another point they force Sam to make these pills and he does. But he gives them the wrong pills so he gives them laxatives. I didn't need to hear them fart and shit their pants but. That's for me it's a very wonky plot. I think the cast is pretty game for what's going on. Like I said, there's a lot of style with the camera work. Uh, it like doesn't want to make you bored. It's not a boring film. It goes by a decent pace. Apparently one of my cats feels the same way. Maybe he does feel he was bored. But I gotta disagree with him. I don't think it was as boring as one of my cats thinks. Now, the Dear Morn, I'll Dear Morn to spoilers, but like I say, this is a movie that's going to stick with me. But it's, again, it's one of those films I'm watching, oh, okay, you know what, I've seen much worse, and eh, I think I saw this once before, and I didn't really care for it. But watch it again, after seeing so many worse films, I'm like, you know what, this is, if you like Sam Jackson, if you like Robert Carlyle, if you like the trailer... It's not action that's going to take your breath away. The plot's a bit, like I said, wanty. Okay, like spoilers. You try to find out this drug is a placebo. It's not real. Which is weird, because I swear there's a point early on that they test the drug and they go, Yep. Now, yes, I know Sam, when he tells it's a placebo, he says... Well, the ingredients in it make it seem like it's a drug. I'm sitting there going, what ingredients are put into a candy that you can ingest and would be out in the market that will make it pass a drug test? As in, yep, this is a drug. This is an actual drug. What kind of candy is that? So, I'm like, okay. It seems like a, a cheap trick to get us to believe in this. But it's a placebo, and I'm thinking, well, what if it didn't work? I mean, I, I get the idea of a placebo, but a placebo doesn't work on everybody. 
Maybe I'm wrong, but placebo doesn't work on everybody. So what if you did one of these and it didn't work? But whatever. But yeah, like I just said, what made what does work in the film, uh, Sam Jackson, I mean, you've seen him play this type of character before. So it's nothing new for Sam. But he did play this character in his sleep. And on the flip side, he's not sleepwalking through it. So he's fine. Uh, Robert Carlyle, he works well. I think, you know, you need a guy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sam. And I think he, he pulls it off well. That's one of the things with Eugene Levy. He just did not work with Sam Jackson. It's just two, way two different styles. I understand a lot of comedy dudes have different styles, but this is just too different and two, two very different waves of comedy that just didn't work. Plus, was the man PG-13? I can't remember. This is rated R, so you don't have to sugarcoat things. And Robert Carlyle and his girlfriend, the X1 Emily Mortimer, they also have good chemistry. She's not a bad actress. Super spoilers. <laughs> Milov took a drink and Sam tells him, oh, by the way, that was, I, I would call it the live wire. Pretty much, it's a bomb that mixes in, and then Sam has an umbrella, and he just, Milo just explodes, and paints the whole room red. I didn't expect that, but that was like, oh, shit, you know, okay. There's, there's a few things here to go off the beaten path. But like I say, it's a movie that's not... There's nothing in it that would make me think, call it like a classic or an underrated gem, but it's one of those that you watch it on cable, or you see it on your Netflix, or however you see movies you watch, you know, you know what? Didn't take too much time. Eh, it's alright. You see much worse. And the, the energy makes it so it's not at least boring. One thing I find funny, and in spoilers, is that when everything ends, the t there's text that goes, No one knew why he wore a kilt. And then two minutes, in, two minutes later, they answer why he wears a tilt. So again, the text says, no one knew why he wore a tilt. Then some credits. Then boom. He's at a Scottish castle and he bought it because he, it was his slave master's ancestor's slave master's castle. And he's going to claim to it. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's why he wore a tilt. It feels like the very opening and the very ending were afterthoughts. It felt like this film was shot and finished, and then they said, Oh, by the way, did you film an opening and that's in the 70s? Can you film an ending that... They just don't fit. Like, you chop up the very opening and that very end, I think it would work better and less 20. And also, I would like to have seen a little bit more action. I mean, Ronnie Yu, he's not John Woo. <laughs> I did it, but... Uh, again, there's a... I mean, there's decent bits, now that I think about it. Like, there's where the hit woman is shooting everybody, except Sam. And people get shot with, you know, squibs. Practical blood squibs. And I'll tell you, that's like one bit of humor that worked for me. Because they're trying to shoot back, but one's sh almost shooting the other. And the guy gets pissed, so he shoots him. <laughs> you bloody wanker! Ta -ta -ta. That, that did make me chuckle a bit, I'll admit. And as I said, some of Robert Carlyle's dialogue. Because I do like him as an actor. You know, Robert Carlyle was a pretty good actor. I think, like I said, compared to a lot of films I've seen, this was fairly easy to watch. So it's not a hard watch. But yeah, when this came out, it did nothing. Where critics did nothing at the box office, it came and went just like that. And, uh, I mean, Sam would do better. 
He's, he tries to do a lot worse. It's no Hitman's Bodyguard. It's no, you know, Pulp Fiction. It's no Dire with a Vengeance. That's my favorite Sam Jackson film. I even like Snakes on a Plane. I would say I like that more than this. But I like this more than, like I said, The Man. I'm trying to think what else he did uh, during this time. I could never get into Rules of Endangerment. It's like, eh, one of those. I would say I like this more than Rules of, Rules of Endangerment. I liked Freedom Land. That's one a lot of people didn't like. I did like Freedom Land. With uh, Sam Jackson in it. But, uh... Is with it. It was a weird choice too for the director because Ronnie, you again before this did Brad Chucky, after this did Freddy vs. Jason. So it's a very different type of director. Other than you know when the person explodes at the end into a gush of blood, you know, okay, there he is. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.